Welcome to Chatting with the Experts with your host, Paula Okone, where we help hardworking, go-getter small business owners like you learn how to take your business to the next level. We interview solopreneurs and entrepreneurs like you who are successful at what they do and are extremely passionate about it. Tune in weekly as they share incredible strategies, tips, and advice on what they did to put them ahead of their competition. Be sure to join us at chattingwiththeexperts.com and subscribe to receive your free tips, strategies, and more on how to be the successful person that you are. My guest today is Kalani Thomas. And Kalani has been in sales since he turned, actually he says two days after he turned 14. He is the CEO and founder of... The Help Desk Sales. And he has since sold over $150 million of products and services to businesses all over the country. About six years ago, Kalani decided to leave corporate America and start his own consultancy in Charlotte to work with small businesses. And after six years in business and working for over 250 small businesses in the area, Kalani has perfected a style of coaching that's unique to him. Welcome, Kalani, to Chatting with the Expert. I am thrilled to have you here. Thank you, Paula. Great. So the premise of this program, as you know, is to ask you the three questions that you are frequently asked, because that's what drives the business. And I know you get more than three questions, but I wanted the top three. So let's begin by talking about the very first question that you get, which is, what exactly do you do as a business coach, Kalani? (laughs) Uh, I get this question probably every day. And uh, for most businesses, what I'm doing is really just giving them the confidence to be able to make decisions that help them grow their business. Now, I do that through anything that has to do with finding, acquiring, and keeping money. And that's typically the sales, marketing, customer service, operations, really the communications parts of the businesses. And I typically like to share a metaphor, if I can, that really helps to define what it is that I do. And most people are familiar, Paula, with putting together a jigsaw puzzle. I'm sure you're probably one of them. I am. Okay. And our businesses are nothing if not a puzzle, right? So if you've ever put together a puzzle, you probably have the same experience everyone has of sitting at a table for a while, you're working on the puzzle. At some point, you've got the box top with the picture in one hand and a piece in one hand. You're really focused in on a particular area. And then up walks a new person to the table And that new fresh pair of eyes is able to look and snap a couple pieces in that you were bound to get to, but you weren't looking at. See, as a coach, my job is to be that fresh pair of eyes because you can't be both the person sitting at the table working on the puzzle and the fresh pair of eyes at the exact same time. And for most business owners, they're sitting focused. So lots of little interactions snapping these pieces of their business into place is where I bring value in what I do. That's neat. I'm going to jump out a bit from that. What what made you come up with that idea? Of puzzles or working with people in that way? Working so, with people that way. So <laughs> I said something for the first time yesterday that I'm going to start to roll with a little more often, but there's there's no need for people to be the perfect version of their business. They just need to be a better version of their business tomorrow than they are today. And so that's little micro impacts to someone's business. So I referenced myself as sort of a business solver that's solving businesses with like a t-shirt gun, right? It's like I stand in front of the crowd and I'm like, who needs some help over here? A couple people raise their hands and I fire a t-shirt into the crowd. Um, but I'm doing that with business advice. So I fire that into the crowd. A couple people reach for and grab it and the one that seems to take it and really own it it's the person that gets to keep it and use it long term fabulous concept i love it love it so let's go to question number two when you offer access for only 350 dollars a year how can you afford to do that for such little money you're given such value and at only 350 a year Right. And this is my favorite question because it's usually the first question someone asks me right before they pay me $350 for a year of access to me. But simply put, I've actually built a mission statement that talks a little bit about why I do this this way. And it's that I would rather charge too little and do too much and risk my company than charge you too much, not do enough and risk yours. And that's really what it comes down to. When I started my consultancy, I did it at that same typical level everyone else does, a couple thousand dollars a month, annual contracts, things like that. And what I found is I was going into two to five million dollar a year businesses for 40 or 50 grand a year, teaching them 
how to make another million, which is great. But for the small business world, a four or five million dollar business isn't exactly where most people are at. So to be making two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand a year and pay someone forty to fifty grand to show you how to make another hundred thousand even can be a lot for a small business to swallow and take on as a financial challenge. So by charging a lot less, I have the opportunity to prove that we can make these small impacts to the business. And if I'm only responsible for making up three hundred and fifty dollars of revenue, because that's what I've taken from you, it makes people a lot more tolerant to having longer conversations, more conversations, and to end up walking away at the end of the year making several thousand off of me, whereas that's a good thing for them, um, that would have been a loss in another model where I'm charging, you know, 30 or 40 grand for the same thing. And now, I'm now clear on, on why you do that. So your sweet spot, small business owners, and you, they're able to appreciate what you're doing for them. So with a small business owner, when you go and you make much of more of an impact Mm -hmm. to their bottom line than if you're with a big corporation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what it comes down to, I think at the end of the day is everyone should have a coach and not everyone wants to take on that financial load of hiring a coach. So I give people the opportunity to do that without having to really break the bank or really watch every single thing that person does in order to make sure you're getting your value out of them. So what makes you different from all other coaches? Because you mentioned everyone should have a coach. Again, everyone should have a coach, and it's mainly because they bring perspective and experience to the things that you're working on on a day-to-day basis. And those two things, perspective and experience, can really save you a lot of time and money. So I think not all coaches operate this way, but what I've seen a lot of coaches do, and I joke with my clients about this, is they'll come in after not talking to you for a while, they'll high-five you and assign you some homework, and then they disappear either until you bug them or it's time for them to get paid again. What I do is I will come in after regular conversations with someone, split homework up between the two of us, high five them, and decide on a time where we're going to come back together and compare notes. So when you take this jog or not challenge of making a business better and making it grow, and you split it into these little bite-sized interactions, and then you chew those interactions with your client, you end up with a much better outcome of success. Mm, I love that. So you you make it much more personal. Mm -hmm. And the small business owner knows that you're there for them. You're not just there for payment, but you're actually hands-on. So if I call you tomorrow, I know that Kalani is going to pick up the phone and give me some valuable input into my business, as opposed to knowing that I'm scheduled just once a week and at the end of that session, it's done. Absolutely. And part of the reason I don't charge a lot, again, is because it helps the individual that I'm working with uh, take this in a, in a better, in a better light. Right. So let me think of how I'm actually trying to phrase this because there's a, there's a point I want to make with it. Um, Right. So any, anybody can come in and basically say, Hey, your business is at the letter A today and it needs to be at the letter Z tomorrow in order for you to be more profitable. And that's what the typical process of hiring a coach or a consultant is. I try to keep three things in mind with every piece of advice I give someone, which is first of all, your skill set, not what's the skill I want you to learn, but what's the next skill you need to learn to be better again tomorrow than you are today. The second thing is tolerance. If we're talking about lead generation, there's anything you can do from cold calling to mastering the click funnel process through your website, right? So for me to say, hey, I think we should do an email campaign for this, that, or the other, tolerance to doing those things is an easy thing to measure. Because if someone doesn't think email works and that's their tolerance to doing and participating with this, no problem. We'll cut it and we'll do something else. There's lots of ways to skin that cat as the saying goes. And then the very last thing is the culture. Right. For a lot of small businesses that I work with, they're working with very small teams. And if I'm going in and asking one person on a team of three people to do something differently, I'm impacting a third of that team's culture. So I want to make sure all these things that I'm giving out as advice and feedback and what's the best thing for them is doing it in a way that we're not negatively impacting the culture or positively drawing it out of a bad slump that it may be in through just one person's actions. You've given me even more clarity on what you do. All right. And that's what makes Kalani Thomas so different from all other coaches. I heard you say or someone say that you are available every week. You put out a calendar. 
-hmm. and you send it to all your clients and ask them to choose a time or time slot where they can personally meet with you or at least consult you will consult with them over the phone. Mm -hmm. So my business, because I'm not a banker, um, I operate Monday through Sunday, seven o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. Most of my meetings are only 15 minutes. So because I'm doing uh, four meetings an hour, 12 hours a day, I like to say there's a little over 300 opportunities a week to talk with me. And you're right, all that's published directly on the website. Uh, you can go to our, our member section and e any type of meeting you could want to have with me is there. Everything from long project calls to quick powwows where you just want to get feedback on one or two things. Um, and then one of those things that makes me different as a coach is I want to talk to my clients as often as possible. So I actually do push messages twice a week, text messages to all my clients to remind them that my calendar is published, to let them know of availability that's come open to them. Uh, this way I can make sure everybody has an opportunity to have time with me before they get too busy in the week to remember to call their coach. Wow. Impressive. Thank you. So I've been speaking with Kalani Thomas, and we, as you heard from the beginning, he is the founder and CEO of The Help Desk Sales. So where can we find you online? So it is thehelpdesksales.com, T-H-E, helpdesksales.com. Or if you're more familiar with my name, Kalani Thomas, you can just go to kalanithomas.com. It will take you to the exact same place. Cool. What about social media? Social media, it's The Help Desk, and on Twitter, at salescoachcal. And then the other one is at Problem Solvers. And that is for the actual small business help desk sales. Wonderful. So thank you, Kalani. This has been very helpful. Even though I have known you for a while, I'm even clear on what you do. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners will be too. Absolutely. Thank you for being a guest and chatting with the experts. Thanks, Paula. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to get your feedback. Simply head over to iTunes, leave a five-star review, and let us know who you are interested in hearing more from and what topics interested you so that we can bring back those experts again.